Bill and Ted Face the Music did not just bring back original stars Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter to their original roles. It brought back writer and creator Ed Solomon, who both co-wrote the earlier movies and who co-created Bill and Ted in the first place, alongside co-creator Chris Matheson. Outside of Bill and Ted, Ed Solomon is a prolific Hollywood writer in his own right. He started out as a staff writer for the sitcom Laverne and Shirley while he was still in college, which made him the youngest member of the Writers Guild at the time. Since then, he has not only written the Bill and Ted movies, but other high-profile films such as Men in Black, Imagine That, and Now You See Me. He has also provided script contributions for Super Mario Bros., the original X-Men, and 2000's Charlie's Angels. In conjunction with the release of Bill and Ted Face the Music, Tom was able to sit down with Ed to talk about his career. In this third in a series of conversations, we talk about the latest film, Bill and Ted Face the Music. Rumors of the development went all the way back to the early 2000s. Um, is this the same script that you guys were working on back in 2010, 2012? Or did it, is this something completely different or just a reworking of kind of similar ideas? Oh, gosh. Well, there's some similar things. The idea that it didn't work for them. The idea that they've been trying hard, haven't been able to make it work. And that they get the idea, like, wait, we know we must have written this song that's supposed to unite the world because they told us in the future we did. We just must not have written it yet. What if we go to the future to when we have written it and steal it from ourselves? Mm -hmm. Dude, good idea. So that was always a part of it. And then the spine of the second act of the movie, which was really rooted in our minds in A Christmas Carol and a little bit of It's a Wonderful Life, but like what would happen if you got to see yourself two years, five years, 10 years, and ultimately 45 years in the future? You could see this trajectory of this life uh, in this particular iteration of uh, the, the timeline. And that became the core of the movie. And what Bill and Ted realized toward the end, I don't want to do a spoiler for folks, but you know what Bill and Ted realized, that was always a part of it. But how we went about it was very different. It was, our ending was a much more muted one originally. Our ending ended with them failing and at the very last minute realizing the big realization. Literally the last minute of the movie was them realizing it. It felt too small to people. And every Bill and Ted movie has had to have its ending reshot. The first one did because we thought it should end in a classroom and we thought that would be really moving and it was not big enough. The second one did. We had to bolster up that battle of the bands, just didn't have a big enough ending. And we knew right away, we're going to have the same situation with this movie if we do it this way. Those things were the same, but we ended up making a lot of changes going through it. We wrote our first draft. Alex and Keanu, correctly, were the ones initially saying bigger, more world at stake. And we struggled a lot getting the introduction to the guys right, knowing it's the first time people will be seeing them for 30 years. Do we want to start them like Ted's working in an insurance company now? You know, and Bill is a, a manager of a hot dog on a stick. Or do we want to start them as musicians? Or do we, like, where are they we knew where they were emotionally and that never became a discussion, but where are they technically and physically and geographically? Right. We had to kind of think what's the best way in. But the first thing we actually wrote once we started writing was the, uh, we, the wedding scene where Bill and Ted walk out and say, hello, friends and loved ones. Welcome to this most joyous of occasions. And just a very simple introduction. We always, that was that was there from the beginning but we had a lot of a lot of stuff a lot of stuff we tried a lot of stuff we tried we tried right um you know pre-title intros you know like a where are they now video we we tried all sorts of stuff there was a little bit of controversy around the children uh, about Bill and Ted having daughters and not sons. And it was assumed by most that they were sons. There was a few comic books that came in, out that reinforced that idea. Our first draft in 2010 that we, we wrote, you know, the first couple of drafts, it was Will and Theo. And it sucked, honestly. The, 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 we never got the voices right. They seemed either like young Bill and Ted, which was so derivative because we did young Bill and Ted. They were called Bill and Ted. 
Or when we tried to change them up, they became like cool guys or smart guy. And it was like comedy. It's like we sprayed laugh off all over them. You know, it was not working. And then a few years later, we, because we both have sons, Chris Matheson and I, we both have sons, we both have daughters. And we thought, what if we made them girls? What if we, what if they had daughters instead? What if instead of Will and Theo, it's Billy and Thea? And the whole thing opened up. It just became so much better. And we were so grateful. And it also widened the film, which had been very male centric. It gave a, a, a whole other feel to the movie and it made us, it reinforced other choices that we knew we were going to be making. Initially, Rufus was going to be the, the, the Rufus character, the, or I should say not Rufus, but the, the character who functioned the way Rufus did was going to be a kind of Henry Rollins type dude. And we're like, what are we doing? This is about fathers and daughters. Rufus should have a daughter. It also allowed us, because once we knew we were not going to have that scene where the guys visit Rufus in a big, meaningful way, it allowed us to have George's presence more in the movie. Call her Kelly. You know, it, it, it needs to open itself up now. It's not just that the world is changing. It's that we've changed. It's that the characters have changed. It just made it for a better film all around. The part that pisses me off is when you get that bullshit, like it's part of some woke agenda, which such, it, that's the part that takes me off. First of all, there isn't a Hollywood agenda involved in this movie in any way. I cannot stress to you enough how uninterested in this movie Hollywood was. We, they passed on it left and right. Every time we tried to get someone to finance it, they passed for a decade. Everybody passed multiple times. Every independent studio passed. Every financier passed. There's no agenda. That's the part that makes me mad. The part that's truthful is it just was boring and derivative and redundant when it was. I like that I said derivative and redundant. That's redundant in and of itself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, having them be young boys. It just didn't work. It was no good. Is there any final thoughts you want to share with me on Face the Music or anything else before we go? This was a movie that was made uncynically by people who really wanted to be there, who fought like crazy to get this movie made, who gave up most of their money. Most everyone is working for very little money. And many of us had to put what little money we are having, put a large chunk of that back into the movie just to keep it afloat. And so for me... My hope more than anything, hey, look, I hope this movie breaks out into people who have never seen a Bill and Ted movie. But my most important hope is that for the people for whom Bill and Ted does mean something, that they feel like, like this was a communication to them and that they feel that we did our best. You know, whether it succeeds or not, it's going to be up to them and their their point of view. But that we did our best to give them the best version we could figure out how to do, given the time and budgetary constraints that we had, you know? So that's my hope. My hope is that people have, have fun with the movie and that it provides a, a, a nice, you know, cap to the journey for them. And during these weird, crazy, stressed times, it's just a little balm, a little re relief, a little diversion it makes you smile. Be sure to stay tuned for more coverage on Bill and Ted, including more from Ed Solomon and what we think of the film before it's released on demand and in select theaters on August 28th.